I'm Coach Callan Stores, and I got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk like what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next and you up next. Keep the wins go hard. Rock the star on the big scene, make them know who you are. You don't break the sweat, don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flesh. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's SLT Nation! Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right. We're talking to rising stars in our communities, individuals who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And today we got something special in store for all of y'all out there. That's right. Hey, she is a Silver Waves top 75, one of the dopest assistant associate head coaches in the game right now. And guess what? She is a walking bucket right now she can give it to each and every one of y'all who on the other side of this thing who's watching this show you see that you see a bite that bottom look can't do that I, I, I will work i will do you something miserable <laughs> coming to us straight out of jasper nation from the manhattan college family we got her the newly minted associate head coach callan stores how you doing coach man that was that was quite the intro well, well so quite much. the intro is what we do around here. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we got to do. We got to show some love, Kevin. I'm, I'm gonna let you yeah, go. I'm, play. Ready. I'm ready to. I'm ready to go play a game or something right now. Coach, I know you can do it. You can do it. That's the, see. We get a lot of coaches on this thing. Some of them had that talk, but I don't know. I got a feeling that uh, you you, you be a, it'll be a long night if you if you want to take a, a sip of that water right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a tall drink that you want to get right now. Hey, check this out. This is your first time rocking with us, Jasper Nation. I I am your host, the mouth of the South B. Jones, the OG All Things Louisiana. Mr. Yee is in the building, and I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, the other side of the logo, the choir storm. The head coach, KT Kev. How you feeling today, man? B. Jones, I, I'm feeling great. We got a walking bucket, and I'm not just talking about myself, B. Jones. I'm talking about Coach Stores, but. Let's turn up. Let's go. But before we continue, before B. Jones, we, we, got, we got to give a shout out. Okay. To one of our play sisters, Coach Sarah Mitchell. She's rocked with us twice. And now she's a part of the same staff that Coach Storrs is a part of. So, Coach Mitchell, thank you for showing us love. We love you. We can't wait to see you in person. Take anyway, B. Jones. Just think, man. Just think if we hadn't had a good, like, relationship, we wouldn't have got Coach Storrs. I mean, that's crazy. Good work matriculates down the road and i'm super excited to uh to have another one of those members and it's and like you said coach it's a small circle it's a small circle so uh so we're gonna talk a little bit about that here in a second but coach stores before we get going we got to get you to reach over your right shoulder you stretch it out real good coach i need you to grab that and we need you to pull that seat belt down and yeah. buckle up <laughs> because this is about to be a wild ride we about to have a good one in store for y'all today hey check this out if this is your first time watching the program the first thing i want to say out of my mouth is thank you we couldn't do this without you we need you guys we got to ask y'all to do a small favor for us three small favors actually in order to help us to keep this amazing momentum of 2023 going we need y'all to help us to just grow this platform so three simple things that you could do and we know y'all heard every other uh platform say this kind of stuff influencers we need you to smash that subscribe button and become a part of our family we got over 30 episodes left in 2023 we promise you we're gonna keep working hard in 2024 it's gonna be nuts i'm telling y'all <laughs> it's gonna be crazy and then number two we need you to hit that like button hit it as many times as elon musk will allow you to hit it we just need you to take that link and we need you to throw that into your whatsapp your, your, your family chat, your, your your professional chat, whoever you got out there on your iPhone and send this show to them so this thing can start getting going viral and start getting a lot of momentum. Coach Stores, is Jasper Nation, is, is Manhattan going to rock with us? Absolutely. 
Yes. All right. Hey, well, here we go. Let's do it like we true to it on the th- count of three. Let's make some noise, Manhattan. One, two, three. Boom. <laughs> Welcome to the Sports Life Talk family. That's right. We don't do fans. We don't do followers. If you did any of those three things, you are part of our family. We want to personally reach out. Thank you. So do me a favor. If you did any of those three, drop us a fire emoji right now in the chat so we can just personally reach out to you and just digitally shake your hands and just tell you how much we appreciate you. And thank you for being a part of the, the, the Sports Life Talk family. All right, y'all. It is time. We're going we to have the real Manhattan Project on this thing today. Coach Stores, are you ready for the Sports yes, Life sir. Talk initiation? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, Coach, to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Okay, I'm, I'm going to kind of be all over the place here, but uh, I'm going to have to go with Ed Sheeran, Beyonce, um, Drake, Justin Bieber. <laughs> Don't hate me. <laughs> no, okay, we like Justin Bieber. I love some Justin Bieber. I know, Kevin I like the him. grown Justin, though. I, I like... <laughs> When I met your girl, my heart oh, went yeah. knock, knock. You know, but yeah, Kevin nice. liked that yummy. Yeah, he liked yeah, that grown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to have to finish off with uh, Kalani. Oh, I just got finished listening to Kalani. Oh, so good. Yeah. So that's a bomb. Kevin? Oh, my God. What you God. giving him, right. man? Coach, we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you can get is five. Ooh. How long have you been coaching? Uh, going into my eighth year. Eight year. B. Jones, eight times two is what? 16. At least in Louisiana, it is. All right. I hope it's everywhere. Give us 16. That's how many Bro. points she's going to score on you, Kevin, when y'all play one on one. My knee hurt right now. I ain't <laughs> playing. I just I woke up and my knee was hurting. I ain't playing. Huh? You crazy. All right. So, who is your favorite superhero and why? Um, maybe, maybe Spider Man. Um, I just feel like, you know, he's, he he's out there to do good, save people. Um, that's kind of what my motto is. Um, kind of there for the people, for the players, and I just think it looks cool when he like spits the web and is going building the building. That'd be pretty pretty dope so i'm gonna have to go with with him well you'll definitely be the taller spider-man so i don't know how that's gonna work flying around the city but hey if you can make it work we are all with it all right so every superhero has their own theme music and we consider you a superhero with that said what would your theme song be maybe um the good life by one republic Oh, um, I thought you were say "Good Life" by Kanye yeah, West. Yeah. Oh, that too. Maybe that too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just feel like I'm I'm super blessed. Uh, I love what I get to do every day. Um, I have a beautiful family, and I'm just living living a great life. So that'd probably be my my theme song. Sing, sing it. Sing the one the one uh, the one Republic version, Coach. Oh, you don't want to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we all we that favor. I almost got it, KT. Yeah, she thought about it. Like, should I really sing? Nah. <laughs> all right, so what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Probably you can't do everything alone. I'm a very independent person. I, I've grown up, you know, as was someone that was, you know, very hardworking, always just wanted to strive for greatness. But sometimes I, you know, I was so like one tracks, you know, thinking about my goal and, and what I want to achieve. But at the end of the day, you need a team around you. And it's it's five people on the basketball court. Not one person can do it alone. So the same as coaching. You know, there's there's five of us coaches on our staff and we all we all have to work together and um and do and do great things do different responsibilities um even in my my marriage you know we're a team we work together um putting our daughter to sleep or um cleaning the house whatever it may be so uh just teamwork is is so big in different areas and everyone has to kind of pull their own weight uh not just one person can can do it all so do you think Callan the hooper 
could play for your current head coach? You know, it's funny you say that. So my, my current head coach actually recruited me in high school uh, to Sacred Heart. So I actually never got to play for her, though. I was very, very close. Um, but she, she left the summer I arrived, went to Villanova. Um, but, yeah, I would definitely say I, I could play for her. I, I almost did. <laughs> um, and I would have loved to. I wish I, I wish I had the chance. She's an extremely passionate but also super caring. She's a mother too, so so she just has that great balance of of wanting to win championships and and be be a great coach, but but also is going to be loving and caring and and enjoying the journey uh, as well. So I definitely uh, would have wish I could have played for her. She's going to enjoy that part. All right, so B and I we're going to produce a movie centered around you. The one thing that we're missing is a lead actress. Who should we get to play you in the story of your life? See, this is this is the one, KT. Well, I would have said me. Sandra Bullock. This is the one I would have said Sandra Bullock. Everybody, everybody, come on, and want to say Sandra Bullock, but I, I think this is the one that gets closest to Sandra Bullock. This is this is other um, actress I'm thinking about. And I, I don't know her name because she's a, like a one that we can probably afford to get on the show because <laughs> we we can't we can't get Sandra Bullock. But this is one that's closest to it. Um, Who you see, KT? Uh, from the Fast and the Furious, uh, Jordana Brewster. Mm, I like I that. I just gotta see her playing her. You know what I'm talking about, that. right? Pete? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vin Diesel's sister in the movie. Yeah, yes. I like that. So I can I can see that. All right, so yeah, that's a tough one. Oh, you got to pick. You got to pick, Coach. I can't go on without you picking. You, you, you ain't gonna let her ride, huh, KT? No, I can't let her ride. If she gonna beat me in basketball, I'm gonna Jessica Biel. I'm just gonna get someone that you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what Jessica been up to lately? What Jessica Biel been up to lately? Shoot, making sure Justin ain't cheating. That's probably the best thing she's been doing right now. You know, Ed, Justin, <laughs> he been acting up. All right, so. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> He yeah, did. Like, and you don't remember he did that movie with old girl and they went out on a date and he wasn't supposed to. Oh, I mean, mm. John, we could be messy here. Justin ain't gonna see this. If you do, <laughs> I apologize. It was B. Jones told me to tell you. All right, so coach, uh, B. Jones and I, we love to travel. When we travel, we gotta eat. So we come out there to watch y'all play. What is that one food spot to get your stamp of approval and what's your go-to meal there? Well, for something quick, you gotta have some some good pizza. Um, we have some great pizza places around around campus. Um, it's a really good Italian spot right on the corner. It's you know kind of a hole in the wall, but it's it's fantastic. Um, the penne alla vodka is really good, so that's say probably again, coach. probably a go to. Say that again. Penne alla vodka. Yeah, see, that was too fancy for me. Hey, she said, in the al vodka. Hey, it sounds delicious, though. What, what is that? What is that? It's like a cheese dish? Uh, like a, pasta. Yeah, cream, pasta. Creamy pasta. Yeah. Oh, I like that. All right, so now we're speaking my language. I like that. Uh, I know what Chicken. I can't wait to go do some. There's Chicken also a really good uh, Jake's Steakhouse is right there. They have really good steak. We're we going to be in Manhattan for a triple hitter. They're going to be like, man, you just came from one game. Y'all been here for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Until that money run out, we, got to, we got to work on the staff, B. Jones. All right. Now it's time for the You Got Next offering. We're passing our collection plates around and asking you to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. Leave us your top five music artists, your theme song, and your favorite superhero in the comments. And finally, you see B. Jones has been pointing for like two minutes. Let me hear him get there. Go to our website, <laughs> sltugotnext.com, to learn more about us and the other You Got Next family members, like Coach Sarah Mitchell. Now, allow me to turn over to B as we learn more about our newest family member, Coach Callen Stores. So, B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. Hey, Coach Stores, welcome to the show. If y'all questioning if this, this, this store here is 7 Eleven 24 7, y'all can get any time y'all want. I'm telling <laughs> you, she is a beast on the basketball court. We're going to talk a little bit about that basketball journey, but let's start from the beginning. Let's, let's take this thing back to when you first fell in love with the game. When did, when did you know that basketball was it for you, and when did you start playing? I started playing in third grade. Kind of in just parks and rec, just for fun, and then realized that I was actually pretty pretty good at has natural talent. 
Um, I didn't get too serious probably till end of middle school. My brother was a was a basketball player as well. Um, he played in college, and that he was a big reason why I, I stuck with it and, and really worked. We were out in the driveway all the time playing, shooting together. So he, uh, I really looked up to him, wanted to be like him, go to college and play basketball. So he's kind of uh, a big mentor for me in in the sport and uh, a big reason why. I am where I am today. Now, backstage, you told us you were six one. Kevin got, I mean, I'm telling you, the color left Kevin, Kevin face. He was so scared because, because I'm going to tell you, so we got a contract. Kevin agreed to this, y'all. Not me. Kevin agreed that whenever we go to visit schools, he is going to have a shootout contest against you, coach. So just be prepared. Kevin is going to challenge you. We're going to, we're going to put it on film and you got to, you got to shoot like he get nervous. He fixing it. <laughs> I'm just no, I want to see the contract. I want to see the contract that you're talking about. That just yeah, sounds so made up. Contract. It's a verbal contract. So, so a I'm verbal just contract you. by mouth of the South where I got to go play against everybody. That's absolutely. Absolutely. But anyway, coach, he, we knew right then that you was real because you're like, you six one and you, you got game. You, you've been over winning all these MVPs and all of this other stuff. So when did you realize that you was different though? Cause I know playing out the driveway and taking elbows from your older brother is different from, from going out there on a, on a Friday and high school hoops with the lights on you and doing and translating all those skills. When did you know you were different coach? Yeah, honestly, probably not till college. Um, I, what? Yeah, I I didn't ha- I had a few offers, not not too many um, big offers, but uh, I just kind of really blossomed. I you know had a really good freshman year, was ha- on a really good team, and and then it, that just kind of fueled me to want to keep being great. And so I think I just kind of kept progressing and honestly I don't think I hit my peak till I was overseas uh, I think that's when I was really um, playing my best basketball I, I wish I, I could have like gone back in time and, <laughs> and right, translated right. Some, of, some of the skills I learned over there but obviously the more you the more you play and the more you work at at your game the better you're gonna be so uh, I was playing against you know women and uh, all over the world and really that was that was when I was you know, really playing my best basketball. So I still get in there with the girls in practice now. And, and uh, you be all loud up. You be, you be like, throw me the rock. Oh, you want to talk <laughs> today? Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Somebody throw me the ball. Hand me the ball. I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, coach, have you always been 6'1? Like, I mean, were you always like a tall kid coming up or? I was. Yeah. I was always tall, like in third grade, always taller than the boys. I hated it. I honestly hated it being tall. I, um, I was always self-conscious, uh, even though I, you know, I wasn't that tall. I just was taller, and I even in college they wanted to list me at six one, and I was like, "Can you just list me as six foot?" I, I really just, you know, I don't know <laughs> something about it. Um, looking back, I probably should have put six one. Maybe would have helped me, um, but yeah, I just, I was, I, I don't know. I just um, wanted to just kind of blend in but <laughs> well, I gotta say this though you, you you were able to you found a way to play uh, college ball you got your education paid for you got your degree and then you go play overseas and you peaked in my opinion at the right time because now you're on the stage with a lot of amazing players there's no more hey this person was the last person to get a scholarship on this school or it's a small school with less resources you now going against the best of the best that's able to play and you went overseas and you did your thing and not one league not two leagues but three different leagues you was able to hold it down with a professional career that lasted four years. I I got to ask this question. Mm-hmm. Seeing kind of what Brittany Griner went through, and it, it, we, that story is sensationalized because it's Brittany Griner. But then I see your story, and I'm like, that's beautiful. That's the way it should be. It, you know, the WNBA has a limited amount of slots. I think it's 144 mm-hmm. roster spots. It's very, I mean, it's like lightning strike <laughs> to get an opportunity to play in the WNBA. <laughs> So are you an advocate for going overseas? Do you tell people your story? Like, hey, you might not be able to be one of those 144 to play in the WNBA, but you can definitely, there's opportunities to go over here to Spain, to go over here to Portugal, to go to Australia, to do these amazing things and to continue your career playing the game you love and earning you some coin at the same time. Oh, absolutely. I actually helped one of our former post players get, get a contract in Lisbon where I played in Portugal. She played for the same team there last year now she's in germany uh she was like i don't know and 
honestly didn't she's like I'm just gonna do it for a year and now she's she's kind of got the bug and she loves the lifestyle you get to travel you literally get to you get paid to play basketball and, and travel the world so it it's it's an amazing uh experience and opportunity so I'm I'm a huge advocate for it and love helping my current players get over there if that's if that's their dream so um and I love getting international girls here to Manhattan so we, we have we're gonna talk, we're gonna right talk about you over there okay. yeah, we're gonna talk about your international recruiting in a second so what what was it like when you told your brother you was like hey you remember when when I was getting buckets on you in the driveway well guess what Baby sister, the MVP. I'm like, I'm the best. Player. I'm the best player in this league. What was it like having that conversation with your family and telling everybody that you you went over there, you was doing your thing? Yeah, uh, he's super humble. He'd probably say, "Oh yeah, she's the best athlete in the family for sure." Blah blah blah. But um, he was a two sport athlete in college, played soccer too. So that's like next level. But uh, but yeah, he's super super happy for me and. Oh, like my biggest fan, him and my dad are are just always right there in my corner. So he was super excited to to see all my success. So what? So you had a four year run. You were thriving. You you did exactly what you wanted to accomplish every single season. All you know, in and out. You had great off seasons, but you decided to put the ball down. What transpired to make you decide to become a coach? That's that's what inquiring minds want to know. How does how yeah. does the league MVP decide? Hey, it's time to prepare the next generation and to give back to the game versus being a, a conduit. Yeah, it's it's funny. I finished up in in Portugal, and I was I had just went back to back to back. So I was in Spain for a season. I did a little stint in Australia, so I didn't go home. You normally in the summer you come home and you get a little break before you go back overseas. Well, instead of flying home, I flew to Australia, and I did like a four month short season there, and then from there I flew to Portugal. So I, I never got that 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 break. Um, so I don't know if that's kind of what led into it, but um, I just kind of got to the point where I was okay. I'm I'm 26, however old, and I, I think I want to start getting into into a career and seeing seeing my family more and 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 build my own family that was something that was super important to me i wanted to have a family so um i knew my best chance at that was getting back to the states and um getting started on that so i actually um emailed a few coaches that had recruited me and a heather at manhattan was one that responded and said hey i'm actually up for the head job at manhattan if, if i get it i'd love to have you on my staff so she got it and it just kind of seemed like a, a god thing so um i was her ga for my first year and um funny story i actually so i i started all year all season it comes around it's probably february um almost march we're almost to the end of the season and my coach in portugal texts me and says hey you know our americans really struggling do you think you can come back just for two months and uh, help us with playoffs so um i actually went into heather's office and i was like hey coach i i really miss it i i still miss the game i don't know if I, I gave it up too soon but i would love the opportunity to go back just for two months you know our season will be over here um i was a ga so i wasn't really getting paid much at the time so it was kind of an opportunity to make some money and she was like absolutely so i went back for two two months helped them uh get to the playoffs we didn't didn't win but um just helped them kind of finish off the season so the coolest part about that was my brother never actually got to see me play overseas and so knowing that this was definitely going to be my last like hurrah, hurrah. yeah he, he came over flew over to portugal and, and got to see my last two games so so that was kind of a cool full circle moment um for me so that's yeah. pretty dope yeah. That's pretty dope. Now, when you came back, it's like she pay, she 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 made you pay for it because she gave you every job underneath the sun. I don't think <laughs> I've ever seen. I don't ever think I've seen so many titles. You 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 you, you, you the international recruiting coordinator. You the alumni liaison. I know you 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 said you only been coaching for eight years, but I gave you a year credit 
for that dobo year. I mean, like if you if you yeah. to me if you around the coaching staff, you doing everything. That's you being a coach. Let's just be real. It, just because they don't put the official coach thing on your title, you were still coaching, coach. So at that point in time, you come back and you and now you even you even managing like the team getting everything. What what was that like? That transition to now? Hey, I'm full time coaching and and I got to do this on a daily basis. Did your mind flip? Did a did it did a certain level of maturity just kind of fall up on you, or w- were you nervous? T- tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, so we actually had a, a coach leave, and so my my head coach was actually interviewing some other people to to be an assistant. I was still supposed to be like a GA for one more year, be the dobo for one more year. Um, but I saw that she was kind of interviewing younger younger assistants around my age and uh, wanted someone that she could mentor and kind of bring up in, in the business. And uh, one day I'm like, wait a minute, that, like that could be me. I like, I want that to be me. So I talked to the other assistants and I was like, Hey, do you think I should say something? Speak up. <laughs> and they're like, absolutely. You know, she's like, they, if she's not going to know if you don't say anything. So I went to her office again and um, I was just like, Hey coach, like, I want to interview for, for the assistant spot. And she's just like, what? Like, I, I didn't even know you were interested. Of course I'm going to interview you. So, um, yeah. So I, if I wouldn't have kind of taken that, taken that chance and if I would have stayed in my comfort zone of doing what I, what I had just done for a year and kind of get, get into that, um, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't be where I am or I've gotten to where I am today as fast if I would have just kind of stayed it in my comfort zone. So, um, yeah, it was a little nerve wracking at first because now you're on the court. Now you're doing scouts. You're, you know, you're cutting up film, um, just the basketball kind of mind part of it, the IQ part of it. It just kind of takes another level. It's not so much, OK, I'm just doing logistics and, and scheduling and all that. I'm, I'm now having to kind of break down things to players and um, and prep for games. So. Um, yeah, it took a little leap, but I had amazing assistants at the time that really, really helped me. Um, Sahar is at head coach at Canisius, um, Ali Bassetti's at Columbia now. So those were two, um, kind of assistants above me at the time that really, really helped and mentored me and got me, um, comfortable and in it and everything. So. Dang, I'm running out of time, Coach. I got so much stuff I want to ask you about overseas. But unfortunately, I got to jump into some Manhattan basketball. But before I do that, I got to talk. You talked about starting your own family. And that dream came to fruition. And you actually go out and you you fall in love with another basketball coach. Can, can you share your love story with us, Coach? Can we can we talk about your love and basketball moment? And, and tell us how you, how you found uh, Coach Stores. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so he was a, a, a grad assistant at the time as well at Manhattan our, my first year. Um, I actually, this is so embarrassing. I, I used the pickup line that I was like, if a guy ever uses this on me, I swear to God, I'm probably just going to punch him in the face. Um, he, I was like, hey, you want to you wanna play one-on-one? <laughs> or, or <laughs> Sometimes I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm that person. I was that person. Um, but hey, it worked. So, uh, <laughs> shoot your shot, ladies. But yeah, I, um, <laughs> hey, if you, if you learn one thing from this show, hey, don't be afraid to go play overseas and hey, use that line. Do you want to play one on one? Uh, yeah, so we, we played horse, I think, and he, he won, so he says, and, um, yeah, kind of went on, on a first date after that, and it just kind of, kind of went from there so um yeah it's pretty pretty cool to to get to work together for about seven years um at the same same school that's pretty rare so um yeah it was is an awesome manhattan's brought me um yeah amazing things <laughs> Now, Coach, you got you kind of remind me of KT. You kind of got this quiet confidence about yourself. I mean, I, I don't think you hit the decimal the, the decimal meter at all. And it's that you real smooth, you real cool, but you also a killer. So, so I need to know if I had the opportunity to interview some of these other Manhattan coaches or some of these Manhattan players, how are they going to describe Callen Stores to us? Probably that like silent assassin, uh, just you know, soft spoken, but super competitive um yeah i'm just kind of that you know 
inside. I'm kind of a beast and an animal, especially on the court. <laughs> but uh, I don't really let it let it show too much. I I think I'm I'm a very consistent person, so I don't really ever get too high, get too low. I'm just you know I'm always gonna kind of just be be right there and um i'm you know very loyal and would do it do anything for anybody but um yeah uh, in, don't, in let the demeanor, don't let the demeanor fool you yeah, in <laughs> translation you uh, turn it over you're gonna be running no follow <laughs> you're gonna be running coach guy <laughs> get on the line <laughs> that's, that's coach friday your favorite line your favorite saw uh, <laughs> uh saying uh, at practice coach all right so 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 let's talk some manhattan Let's talk some ahead because because the Metro Athletic Conference is that's correct, right? Metro Athletic, Metro uh, Atlantic, Atlantic. Manic, Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. That's a Division One league. You guys are doing some big things up there. I actually had the opportunity to look through kind of the the uh, the the teams that y'all play against. That is a very very ultra competitive landscape, and uh, I'm just curious though. How do you go into these living rooms and sell some of these families on on, on coming to play for Manhattan? I mean, tell us about the, cu- the the um, the campus. Tell us about the basketball that's being played up there. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're in, we're in the greatest city. New York City is is amazing. Um, where we're located, you know, we what's different is we're we're not like a typical city school. We're right in the city, and you, you know, you don't know what buildings Manhattan College and what what buildings are in a building like we have an like actual, <laughs> actual yeah exactly I have an actual beautiful campus uh it's very quiet you know you don't feel like you're in the city when you're on campus so you kind of can escape um but you also have that access um to really take advantage of of all that New York City has to offer so um you know we're smaller smaller schools so you just get that tight-knit community feel really get to build relationships with your professors with everyone on campus. Uh, they support athletics um, a lot. So it's just a, a place where you can kind of feel at home, uh, take advantage of, of amazing opportunities, internships, um, and yeah, compete in a, in a really competitive league. And an Overland Park, Kansas girl is out there <laughs> living in the big cities. <laughs> Do you ever look back and you be like, dang, I, can't, I cannot believe I'm like in New York right now. Yeah, I, I would have never thought. I mean, I, I went to school in Connecticut, so, you know, I was like, okay, I'm familiar with the East Coast. But, I mean, New York City, yeah, I I didn't really know what to expect when I first came out here. But um, but now I love it. And now I'm, I'm, you know, I feel like I'm a little bit, I can say I'm a New Yorker now. Um, but, yeah, I love taking advantage of the city and all that it has to offer. So it's it's been a really, really awesome journey so far. Last question, because a friend told me to ask this, not for me, for a friend. What is a Jasper? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you what, know the Jasper? What are you guessing? I, I'm assuming that it's a dude named Jasper who, who was just running around whooping everybody up in New York. We the fighting Jaspers, you know what I'm saying? Like, You know what I'm saying? People be like, man, that's, hey, this Jasper. That's Jasper down the street, man. You know, he, he clear off the whole block when Jasper hit the block. So, no, I'm just, I, I don't know. What is, what is a Jasper? Yeah, no, I mean you're you're pretty right. It's uh, brother Jasper, so he founded our our athletic department. He was our first baseball coach. He actually invented the seventh inning stretch. Um, really? The name named after him. You're right. Uh, a guy that. Yeah. My second guess was going to be like a, a military group, like you know, because that was a lot of wars was fought up there in the Northeast for American freedom. So, uh, so I was going to say like maybe one army division or something was called the Jaspers or something like I don't know. All right, but now we know who the Jaspers are. It is time for me to put my belt on the line, Coach Callum Stars. Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show. We're going to play a little bit of game. All right. A little one on one between me and KT. And you are now officially calling all the shots. Now, have you ever played Would You Rather before? Yes. You kind of, Kevin tested you a little bit earlier today. Oh, no, you didn't. You didn't ask her the question earlier today, Kevin. But we're basically, both Kevin and I are going to give you a choice. We're going to make a pitch to you. Whichever one of those pitches you select, that host will gain a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. And that's right. I am on, I am the champion right now. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty bullish. I got to bring this thing back home. Yeah, fix your face. All right, here we go, Coach. Round number one. Would you rather get the head coaching job of your dreams and go into that school or that franchise to Hall of Fame, or 
coach a player that you recruited that no one gave them a chance they make it to the basketball hall of fame and in their speech tells you they wouldn't be there without you Ooh. i'm gonna have to go with the head coach on that one <laughs> Wait, wait. Oh, wait. The head coach option or the actual head coach? The, the host. The actual oh. head coach. Yes, yeah, me, B. Oh, John. Sorry, I confused you. <laughs> no, no, he wasn't confused. I, I, he wasn't confused. You. So he was you know what I'm saying? He You're an associate head coach. Ain't nothing wrong with being an associate head coach. All right, round number two. Would you rather travel the world hosting your own food show on ESPNU where you get to interview other college coaches, you know, pick their brains, while eating at their favorite place to eat in the towns that they coach in, or or have Netflix film a documentary on five of the dopest associate head coaches in the nation. You are one of the featured guests, and they are following you around this Manhattan program, telling your story, telling the school story, spotlighting yourself and some of the people in the amazing academics around you. I'm gonna have to go with the food and and asking picking everyone else's brain. Oh, she told you earlier she liked food I and she know. liked traveling. So I, I was just hoping she would at least want to promote J brother Jasper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm That's loving this episode. I bet one. you are, man. How much did you slip, Coach Mitchell, to get this done, KT? You slip Coach Mitchell with a twenty? That's none of your business. I, 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 First of all, I, I ain't got twenty. I'm on a teacher salary. I barely got twenty. Well, it, I, I up about ten dollars. I get thirty. Well, no, too late. <laughs> All right. So on our show, which you can watch Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central Time, we have a segment called The Drop, where B. Jones turns shoe guru and presents a pair of shoes that he feels are worthy of your financial donations. So for four and three, both B. Jones and I, we're going to present Coach Stores with a shoe. Whichever one she picks gets a point because I've already technically won this episode. So, Coach, what I'm going to do, I'm going to count down from three, and I need for you to say, hold that sneaker. We're going to show you what shoes we brought today, okay? Okay. Three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. I'm coming from up top. Whatever. I got the perfect shoe. I got a hooper shoe, though. For I, I said, you know what? If she was over there getting MVPs, then, she, you know. Yeah, but look at that Jasper color. This hit right with it. Mm, no, no Jasper's really have an old goal. You got really well, more of a silver. I'm going to my street talk. I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to Coach Stewart. It's not really technically. <laughs> oh, man. That's a tough one. Um, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna get buckets in the mouth of the South. No, no. Yeah! Oh, he's still won anyway. But, hey, I got that point. That's the most important point. <laughs> No, it wasn't. The most important point was the first one to get you two. And you, champion. Oh, Ooh, how I missed you for like two games or one game or however. Coach, thank you so much. About two for or three. Me. It wasn't three. I, stops. I, 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 hope, I, I hope I stretched it. I hope I stretched the belt. When we come down there, do y'all have like metal detectors? Yeah, they got a metal detector. That's New York. Well, I man. get this to the mother. Oh, yeah, pretty much. No. I'm gonna slip this in the back door. Can you bring this in for me so I can have you take a picture with the coach? Oh yeah, no, bring it, bring it right in. Beach, I'm going right in. <laughs> he clowning, he clowning, coach. He ain't, he ain't bringing that belt. He ain't bringing that belt because I'm gonna win it on the next episode. I'm gonna win it on the next episode. All right, coach. Here we go. The title of the show, Sports Life Talks. You got. It. Next. So, Coach, we talked about the, pr the past. We talked about the present. We talked about what makes you tick and who you are. But we don't know. Now that we all following you at Coach Callis Stores on Twitter or whatever they call it now, you got to tell us, Coach, what's in store for you? What's up next for Coach Callis Stores? I want to win a championship. You know, we've been been in the championship game the last two years here in Manhattan. So, so this is the year. I'm, I'm manifesting it. I'm putting it out there. Um, yeah, I want to win a want to win a chip for for my head coach and you know for these girls and um, and then after that, you know, see see where life takes me. But uh, that's that's definitely at the forefront right now. All right. Well, you know, I talked a little bit about you as a coach, but I didn't get an opportunity to ask, what are we going to see when the lights come on? When you hear the sneakers hit that floor and Manhattan, the, the Jasper's finally hit the court. What are we going to see out of this team? 
you're going to see a lot of a lot of defense. Uh, that's that's what we're known for: defense and rebounding. Um, but a lot of selfless basketball. I think we're going to be a, a team that that really moves the ball this year. Um, you know, going to have five people double digits. I'm hoping, and just you know, any night anybody can go off, and you, you're not going to know who, who who you have to stop. You're going to have to stop us all. So I'm excited excited for this this group of girls. They're they're just all about each other and and winning and the team and it's just been been really fun to to be in the gym with them all right so do you have any shout outs you want to give gotta give a shout out to to my husband uh and uh, my daughter who thankfully slept and didn't wake up and cry through this interview <laughs> so shout out to her uh obviously coach Bulin, you know has given me the opportunity from day one and has really trusted me and um, been a been a big mentor and someone that's let me let me grow and, and excel in this business. So I wouldn't be where I am today with without her for sure. Um, so yeah, my family and uh, boss lady. So this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B Jones and KT. I told them my story. Won't you do the same thing? With that said, Coach, who are you calling out? Who should have next? Oh, you got to have my, my girl, Rena Wakama, on. Uh, she was a, on our staff last year here in Manhattan. Uh, she's now at Stony Brook. Just was the head coach of the Nigerian national team. Oh, first, yeah. I think you've probably yeah, seen it on Instagram. Yeah, first. Uh, I got a picture of I met her. Oh, you met her? Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, I met her. I met her, and uh, I didn't know she was that tough when I met her. I was like, hey, "Who? You know, we just doing the hand, you know, shaking hands, kissing baby." I'm like, "Oh my!" I went back and looked, but that was she was. She was like, "Hey, I'm actually, you know, representing the, the Nigerian team today." But she had a Stony Brook stuff on, so we, we'll say that story for for her show. But uh, but coach, it's yeah, it's, it's Rakima, you. right? Uh, Rena Wakama. Wakama, that's it, Coach Wakama. You are officially on the clock, and even though I've been trying to get you anyway to get on the show, you're on the clock. So now you ain't got no other choice. <laughs> you can't leave us on red this time. We can't wait to hear your story on the show. But Coach Callen Stores, you got next. You are amazing, Coach. I love your energy. I love your vibe. You, you, are, you, are, you are a quiet beast. You are a lioness. You are extraordinary and elite. You deserve a yeet. Hey, what's like Talk Nation? Man, we got the best jobs in the world. It's the best platform in the world. We're giving y'all some juice. We're giving y'all some amazing content. We want to thank y'all one more again for hanging out with us, rocking with your boys. We appreciate it so much. Don't forget to tap in with us on any of the social media platforms that you spend your day scouring. We own there, so make sure you tap in with us at Sports Life Talk. All one word, no spaces. And, uh, and if you are thinking to yourself, you're like, hey, I would love to come on this show, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a coach, we don't even care if you're a president of a, of a, of a farm league organ. It don't matter. If you got a story that's going to motivate and help move the culture and you're doing big things and accomplishing big dreams, we want to hear from you. So go to our website, SLT Nation. I mean, excuse me, SLT, you got next.com. SLT, you got next.com. Go to the nominate tab. Click on that and tell us a little bit about yourself so we can reach out to you and give you an audition for the show. And then lastly, come hang out with us, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, Wednesday nights we go live it's a fun show we don't talk just about sports ladies we talk about relationships pop culture entertainment I even talk about sneakers so it's a fun show just a fun hour to just let your head down and relax and uh, have some fun and some laughs with some friends all right Kevin congratulations on, on um, paying coach Mitchell to get the belt back eh, yeah, you know if you ain't cheating you ain't trying but uh, I'm gonna let you yeah. get us up out here man let's go so Halle Berry would you like to play horse I mean, it worked for Coach Storer, so I figured I'd throw that out there in the universe, B. Joe. I want to get Halle Berry to play horse. You think that's going to work, man? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we manifest it to KT. We manifest it, man. She's going to play horse. So, Coach, thank you so much for rocking with us. Well, if you need from us, please let us know, and we got your back. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Coach, out of all the things he could have manifested, he could have manifested us a million, a million subscribers. He could have manifested us a contract. With him. He manifested Holly Berry and him playing hard. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Now, Coach, we're going to come up. Show, show Kevin that J real quick so I can, so he can just, he, he can't even with me to sleep. Oh, yeah, all about the follow. All about the follow through. Ooh, Kevin, you're going to get work because I.
I go from, oh, that's the wrong good life. Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe, be blessed, respect each other, and love one another because together we are better and keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet. The craziest. I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon. Then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah. You got next, yeah. I can feel it. Just like me, you got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time, and you'll see. Cause if you got next, yeah, if you got next, if you got next, then you're just like me. If you got next, if you got next, yeah, if you got next, then you know where to be. I'm talking sports life, talking this.